Hello everyone, welcome back to Oni Chan. Today, I will review the One Piece film Gold for you. In this part, Luffy's group was invited to the world's largest casino, a place where everything is made of gold. Unexpectedly, they got caught up in the scheme of a very dangerous person. He is known as the wealthiest king of the world's casinos, someone who owns 20% of the entire world's gold. At this point, Luffy's group has come to realize the dark side of this golden city. So, he and his comrades tried to fight against him, in order to rescue all the people in this city, helping them escape from the tyrannical and enslaving regime of that wealthy individual. The navy and the world government are currently guarding a gluttonous girl. Her name is Olga, turns out, she is the only one who knows the location of the lost island. That island holds an enormous amount of pure gold that could buy the entire world. But no matter what they do, Olga refuses to tell them. Suddenly, the navy is attacked, by a pirate crew specialized in treasure hunting. This makes the vice admiral worried, because they can't see where the enemy is. Suddenly, a person in a pink coat appears. It turns out his devil fruit ability is camouflage. At this moment, their crew's captain also appears. He immediately threw chains, piercing into the navy's ship. His subordinates begin to attack the navy. It turns out their goal is also to capture Olga. While this CP0 agent is trying to take Olga away, because he has to protect the secret of the pure gold. Suddenly, the captain has caught up. He easily defeats the navy using chains. Olga realizes his intention here is also gold. So she asks, do you also want the gold, right? Then help me escape from here. He immediately attacks the CP0 member, while both are fiercely fighting each other. Olga takes advantage of this opportunity to escape. Seeing Olga running away, he immediately defeats CP0 to chase after Olga. On Olga's side, she thought she had escaped. Unexpectedly, they caught up with her. Olga found herself surrounded by them. Mad then asked, where is the legendary island of alchemy? But Olga remained unfazed. She immediately called her pet to come to the rescue. So, Olga jumped into the sea, riding her lizard to escape, seeing Olga running away. But Mad remained completely unconcerned and immediately left. He was confident he would find Olga and get the pure gold. It turns out the mastermind, Grand Tessero, hired his pirate crew to find the Golden Island. On the CP0 side, they realized the plan had failed. So, they reported the news to their headquarters. At this moment, Olga and her pet were still on the run. Suddenly, Olga felt hungry. Luckily, she spotted the pirate ship of Luffy's crew. Seeing these guys, they seemed foolish and weak. Olga decided to steal their food. Meanwhile, while Luffy was fishing, he spotted a lizard carrying a girl on its back. They decided to rescue the girl. Luffy immediately threw a piece of meat to lure the lizard and pulled it up. So, he managed to bring both of them aboard the ship. Seeing the girl unconscious, it made the entire group curious. So, Chopper immediately examined her. But upon examination, they found nothing wrong with her. Luffy assumed she was just asleep. Suddenly, Olga swiftly regained consciousness and captured Luffy, and forced the group to give her food. But everyone was indifferent, not bothering, which puzzled Olga. Luffy asked, do you want to eat a sniffle? At this point, no matter how Olga threatens them, they remained calm. But due to extreme hunger, Olga couldn't stand anymore. Thankfully, Sanji brought her a plate of food. So she devoured the entire plate of food. Suddenly, Robin noticed the symbol on her clothes representing alchemy. Turns out, Alchemy is a legendary island that disappeared 200 years ago. At this point, Olga had already eaten to full satisfaction. Luffy was curious about what kind of island alchemy is. Robin explained to them, Alchemy Island is a metallurgical island, and a man named Aesir created pure gold. It's a legendary metal, possessing it could buy the entire world. Hearing that pure gold could buy the world, made Nami excited. But Olga still refused to disclose where the pure gold was. Believing that Luffy's pirate crew was too weak, unable to obtain pure gold, it turns out that before, Olga was always exploited by others to search for gold, even though she didn't agree. The group had already changed clothes to go search for gold. Suddenly, Nami made a suggestion, if they find gold, split it 6 to 4 with her. But, Olga insisted they were too weak, so, Nami took out their wanted posters to show her. Olga immediately recognized they were strong. She decided to take the whole group to search for gold. At this point, she revealed to them, that this ring would guide them to Alchemy Island. Inside the ring was a fragment of pure gold. Suddenly, the group realized they were being watched. They attacked the sunny ship. Zoro jumped in to intercept them. At that moment, Mad appeared, surprising Nami. Because she had once been captured by Mad. While attempting to steal his treasure, 
Mad also noticed Luffy's crew possessed observation hockey, allowing them to see the camouflage ability of Spicho P. This shocked Sanji, because it was the ability he longed for, so, they immediately attacked Luffy's group, the whole group immediately retaliated against them, they easily dealt with all of Mad's subordinates, this immediately surprised Olga as Luffy's group proved to be very strong, but Mad found this incredibly exciting, so, he immediately used chains to capture Olga, Luffy's group also immediately pulled her back, leaving Olga stuck in the middle, fortunately, Zoro timely cut her chains, but it caused her to drop the ring, Mad realized that pure gold was inside, unexpectedly, the ring fell into the sea, suddenly, Olga noticed Bonbori Sama approaching, it turns out it's a gigantic football fish, its sudden appearance surprised everyone, Bonbori immediately opened its mouth, seemingly ready to swallow them whole, while Frankie was about to activate the emergency escape system, Olga quickly intervened and halted them, she asked, do you really want to find pure gold? That island is inside this fish's belly, this intrigued everyone, so, Nami instructed Frankie to turn the ship around, and head straight into the fish's belly, at this moment, Mad also found it strange, hence, he decided to turn back and follow Luffy's group, consequently, they all ended up being swallowed by Bonbori, thinking everything was alright, surprisingly, the group noticed that Mad was tailing them, so, he continuously rammed into Luffy's ship, it turns out he wanted the entire group to ram into the fish's uvula, thus, Luffy immediately inflated his body to stop the sunny ship, ensuring the group's safety, unexpectedly, Luffy slipped and fell into the sea, recognizing that a devil fruit user couldn't swim, Olga decided to jump down to rescue Luffy, at this point, the entire group fell into the fish's stomach, on Olga's side, she found Luffy, as soon as he regained consciousness, Luffy found himself on a peculiar island, unexpectedly, as soon as he touched the water, he got burned, Olga quickly explained to him what had happened, that is the stomach acid inside Bonbori's stomach, seeing an island inside the belly of the giant fish, made Luffy very excited, Olga explained that Bonbori's stomach has three digestive chambers, they are currently standing in the first chamber, while alchemy, where the pure gold is stored, is in the last chamber, suddenly, they were surrounded by a pack of dinosaurs, so, Luffy immediately defeated them, causing the dinosaurs to flee, Olga, on the other hand, felt delighted because she could eat dinosaur meat, therefore, both of them grilled the dinosaur for a meal, at this point, Olga revealed she had been here for 200 years, this surprised Luffy greatly, turns out, Olga is actually an elderly woman, Olga recounted the events from 200 years ago, she lived peacefully on this island with her parents, however, when Olga's father successfully created pure gold, they became the target of the pirate because they want to take their pure gold, unexpectedly, Bonbori appeared and swallowed the entire island, believing her father had died, Olga lived alone on this island for 200 years, until she accidentally managed to escape, and was discovered by the navy, eventually meeting Luffy's group, at this point, she said she could help the whole group find pure gold and leave this place, which made Luffy excited, so they both decided to collaborate, suddenly, they were attacked, it turned out Mad had discovered them, he was determined to capture Olga and take her to find the gold, if you want to catch her, you'll have to defeat me first, so, he immediately launched an attack on Luffy, Luffy promptly countered his assault, both engaged in a fierce battle, Seeing that Luffy could break free from his chains, making him delighted. Suddenly, his subordinates appeared, they had captured all of Luffy's group, causing Luffy to worry. Realizing that Mad used everyone to threaten him, so, Luffy stood still for him to capture, at this point, he demanded Olga to lead him to the gold. However, Olga proposed splitting half of the gold with him, Mad agreed. Luffy realized he was merely exploiting Olga, despite this, she insisted on going with him, and demanded that he wouldn't harm Luffy, so Mad agreed and immediately led them away, leaving Luffy alone on the island, while contemplating how to escape, he was attacked by a dinosaur, it swallowed Luffy whole, taking him to its nest as food for the baby dinosaurs, unexpectedly, Luffy easily defeated the mother dinosaur and escaped, causing the baby dinosaurs to become afraid, suddenly, he noticed there was another dinosaur there, it turned out to be an old man cosplaying as a dinosaur, he then untied Luffy's restraints, at this point, he told Luffy, he had also been swallowed by Bonbori for 200 years, because there are too many dinosaurs here, he had to cosplay as a dinosaur to survive, Luffy realized he, like Olga, had been trapped here for 200 years, which surprised him, and he said, Olga is my daughter, Aesir was very happy, 
Knowing his daughter was alive, but he also learned that she had been captured, he decided to join Luffy in rescuing her, so, Luffy carried Aesir outside, he realized they needed to make a boat, suddenly, Luffy spotted a lizard, so he promptly catching it, knowing this lizard could run on water, but it refused to cooperate, unexpectedly, Aesir could communicate with it, making it very pleased, so it agreed to take both of them to find Olga, meanwhile, with Nami's group, they were forced to row Mad's boat, while Robin worried, don't know where Zoro, Sanji, and Frankie are, unexpectedly, they were immediately controlled by Mad, they were forced to continue rowing the boat for him, suddenly, he found Nami familiar, because he had previously captured her, it turned out Nami had attempted to steal Mad's treasure before, coincidentally, she encountered a girl attempting the same theft, both of them were unexpectedly caught, the girl used Nami as bait to escape, while Olga found it hard to trust anyone, Nami still believed that Luffy would come to rescue them, on Luffy's side, they continued pursuing Mad, coincidentally, he spotted the sunny ship there, Suddenly, they were faked attacked by Zoro, Sanji and Frankie, Spicho P had cosplayed his subordinates as Zoro, however, Luffy easily defeated them, so he continued cosplaying them, this time as Aesir, making it impossible for Luffy to recognize who is real, thus, he decided to take care of the whole bunch, but Aesir was afraid Luffy would hit him, suddenly, Luffy asked Aesir to make a funny face, so, he recognized the real Aesir immediately, and promptly knocked out all the imposters, Spicho P realized Luffy was too strong, he immediately fled, meanwhile, Olga led Mad's group to the Alchemy Gold Island, at this point, he discovered an ancient language inscription left by Aesir, so, he immediately forced Robin to translate for him, it turns out the inscription said whoever invades the Tower of the Needle will die, sensing the danger, Mad ordered Robin's group to go ahead, so they arrived at a room with an organ, Mad realized the next step was to play the organ, hence, he used everyone to threaten Brooke to step up, at this point, Brooke began to play the organ, suddenly, Olga recognized that it was the song her mother used to sing to her, Brooke suddenly realized that the musical score was missing a part, so, Brooke played the wrong notes, and immediately activated the trap in the room, fortunately, Robin used her devil fruit power to catch the arrows, Chopper immediately transformed to assist Brooke, so, Brooke could continue playing the piano with peace of mind, she was amazed that even in such a perilous situation, Brooke still had unwavering trust in his teammates, so she also decided to help Brooke complete the music piece, Olga sang her mother's song to Brooke, thanks to that, they successfully passed the challenge in the room, another passage appeared for them to proceed, as they prepared to enter, Spicho P arrived to inform Mad that Luffy was approaching, this made the whole group happy, Mad decided to advance alone into the room and ordered his subordinates to stop Luffy. On Luffy's side, he encountered Zoro and Sanji again, suspecting they were imposters, consequently, Luffy attacked both despite what they said, as he refused to believe them, so, Zoro and Sanji used their special moves, at that moment, Luffy realized they were the real ones, finally, Frankie gathered enough materials to fix the ship and head back, then Luffy informed them that the Nami group had been captured by Mad. This made Sanji furious and he immediately ran to rescue Nami and Robin. Luffy and Zoro chased after them. Meanwhile, Frankie stayed behind to repair the Sunny. On Robin's side, they were still being forced by Mad to help him pass a challenge. At this point, they arrived at a magma abyss. To pass, they needed to shoot the yellow target on the other side of the gate. A three-horned dinosaur appeared, prompting them to throw Chopper out to stop the dinosaur. Meanwhile, Usopp aimed at the target, unexpectedly, a flying dinosaur appeared, deflecting Usopp's bullet, while Chopper was still trying to stall the three-horned dinosaur, Usopp devised a plan, shooting a bullet that spiraled with the wind to misdirect the flying dinosaur, and pierced through the center of the target, finally, they successfully passed the challenge, making Mad very pleased, at this point, Luffy's group had arrived at the alchemy monument, surprisingly, Mad's subordinates were already waiting there and immediately launched an attack, so, Zoro and Sanji decided to hold them off, to allow Luffy and Aesir to proceed inside, while Mad and Robin's group arrived at the final room, they were forced to open the door behind the mouth of the crocodile statue, unexpectedly, as they stepped in, the crocodile's mouth shut, consequently, the entire group tried to hold it open to use the gate key, suddenly, Nami was shocked by electricity, she realized that choosing the wrong path would make the crocodile's mouth close tighter, however, Nami didn't give up, trying to quickly open all the locks, which caused her to faint from the shock, 
Olga rushed in to help open the gate, but she couldn't make it. Luckily, Luffy arrived just in time, so he immediately destroyed the crocodile to save everyone. Surprising mad, Luffy scolded. You scoundrel. What have you done to my friends? Luffy promptly attacked him. Finally, Aesir eventually found Olga, greatly surprising her to discover that her father was still alive. Suddenly, he activated another trap to get the whole group out of there. It turned out to be Aesir's laboratory downstairs. Finally, they found the pure gold, making the entire group very happy. At this moment, Robin has found his diary. Turns out Aesir created pure gold to cure a deadly illness for Olga because pure gold can slow development and aging, and he placed the piece of gold into the ring, that's why Olga could live for over 200 years, now Olga realizes, everything her father did was to protect her, on the other hand, Mad still wanted to find gold, so, Aesir triggers a bomb in the room, causing everything to start collapsing, fortunately, Luffy's group managed to escape in time, thinking they were safe, unexpectedly, Mad chased them here, he even captured Aesir, which greatly pleases him, as he has finally obtained pure gold. Meanwhile, Olga apologizes to her father. Realizing he did everything for her, Luffy asks Mad, what makes you happy? Abandoning your friends for treasure is meaningless. Surprisingly, he's still controlling Nami's group. He activates the pure gold, and turns it into his own heart to gain power. Luffy immediately uses Haki to fight him. Zoro and Sanji are battling Mad's subordinates, he keeps using chains to knock Luffy back, so, Luffy continuously uses gear 2 to attack him, Usopp realizes the acid solution is rising, luckily, Frankie appears just in time, he upgraded the Sunny to withstand the acid, meanwhile, Sanji is still battling Spicho P, who can't understand how Sanji can see him, Zoro was fighting with this girl, no matter how she attacks, she can't land a hit on Zoro, so, he used his special technique, knocked away her arrows, instantly frightening her to the point of fainting, while Sanji detests Spichopi, because he had eaten the devil fruit with the power of disguise, stealing his secret dream of entering women's rooms, Sanji immediately defeats him, on Luffy's side, he's still in a battle with Mad, Luffy, who would never abandon his friends for treasure, but Mad believes having treasure means having everything, he immediately covers his body with chains, continuously attacking Luffy, saying, with the treasure, I don't need friends, Luffy replies, I'll never abandon my friends, so, Luffy uses gear 3, continuously attacking Mad, causing all of his chains to break, sending him flying, finally, Luffy emerges victorious, Zoro and Sanji reunite with everyone, after the intense battle, making Bonbori start feeling nauseous, Luffy's group seizes the chance and rushes outside, making everyone joyful, because they've finally escaped, suddenly, Bonbori's lantern shines again, Aesir explains it's a colossal piece of pure gold. It loves seeking pure gold, Bonbori left. The next morning, Aesir and Olga thank Luffy's team. However, Nami worries about Olga's illness, because they lack pure gold. When they discover Olga's ailment is the Emperor's fever, Chopper immediately says it's now treatable, surprising them both, and Chopper immediately chased after Olga to administer medicine for her. Thanks to that, Olga no longer had to worry about the illness. Finally, Luffy's group departs. Just when everyone thought the journey was fruitless, Nami took out a golden invitation card, an invitation to the world's biggest gambling city, immediately making everyone excited, and decided to go to Grand Tessero, on the side of the entertainment city Grand Tessero at this time. Everyone is happily dancing and singing, to welcome Tessero, known as the King of Casinos. At this time, Luffy's group has also arrived at the world's largest entertainment city, making the entire group surprised because this city is a huge ship as big as an island, as soon as they stepped in, they were overwhelmed, because everything here is made of gold, so, Luffy's group entered the performance area, making them surprised, because they didn't know who the crazy person dancing was, suddenly, a bunch of pirates attacked Luffy's ship, Tessero realized that the straw hat pirates had arrived, so, he immediately turned them into the center of the performance, the pirates then rushed to attack Luffy's group, a swordsman attacked Zoro, but he was immediately defeated by Zoro's strike. Sanji also easily defeated this tall guy. Meanwhile, Robin dealt with all the soldiers. Nami also created lightning clouds to attack them. Then it was Brook, Frankie and Usopp's turn. The captain realized that all of his subordinates had been knocked out. That's when Luffy stepped in. He turned his hair into a gun to shoot him, but it was ineffective against Luffy. So, he was immediately knocked out by Luffy, making Tessero look very exited. So, he immediately controlled the gold, 
capturing the terrified pirates trying to escape. He could even turn them into gold, and concluded his performance in a magnificent manner. At this point, Luffy's group also stepped into the city, seeing that it was very spacious inside, making everyone excited. Suddenly, a beautiful girl appeared, immediately capturing Sanji's attention with her beauty. She introduced herself as Bakura, a tour guide for VIP guests here. She even had a list of VIP guests from Luffy's group, because they are famous pirates wanted by the government. So, Bakura immediately brought out a luxurious supercar, to guide the entire group around the entertainment city. Seeing the lively atmosphere here, making Luffy's group very excited, but Bakura said that this was just the outskirts of the city, at this point, she led them into the central area, surprising Robin, because everything here is made of gold, Bakura explained, everything here was built by Tessero, because he collected all the gold in the world to build this city, it turns out he is the richest person in the world and he is nicknamed the King of Casinos, making Nami and Usopp excited, wanting to borrow some gold to sell, but Bakura told them to dismiss the idea of stealing gold, because there are a lot of transponder snails here, and everything is monitored, at this point, Luffy wants to go to the casino immediately, so, Bakura took the whole group to change clothes, making the entire group look very classy, it turns out the casino is this tall gold building, suddenly, a group of flower selling kids ran over, Usopp was just about to buy, but unexpectedly, one flower was priced at 5,000 berry, it immediately shocked Usopp, because it was too expensive, suddenly, one of the kids spoke, we need money to be free, but it was immediately stopped and chased away by Bakura, on Tessero's side, he was leisurely drinking wine, suddenly, his subordinate came to inform him, Bakura approached the straw hat crew, making Tessero delighted, because he wanted to turn the straw hat crew into his entertainment, suddenly, there was a person drunkenly laughing in front of Tessero, immediately made him angry, and immediately grabbed the drunken guy, because in this city, he is the king, only he permits who can laugh, so, he immediately used gold to grab the drunken person, causing him to be unable to breathe, on Luffy's group side at this moment, they had started entering the world's largest casino, so, Bakura gave the Luffy group a batch of chips worth 20 million berry, so that the whole group could enjoy themselves here, therefore, Luffy immediately ran off to play, the first game the whole group played was a racing game, Nami told Luffy not to lose, because she had placed a lot of money on this game, the race immediately started, all players are allowed to do anything to win, even using guns to shoot at other players, at this time, Luffy's group was accelerating rapidly, unexpectedly, Usopp drove the car off the cliff, so, Luffy immediately stretched out his hand to pull the car back up. Thanks to that, they caught up with the two leaders, at this point, all three increased their speed to the maximum, finally, Luffy's group won, making them very happy, immediately continued to play other games, unexpectedly, Luffy's group kept winning big, so, their chip amount increased to 30 million berry, suddenly, Bakura suggested taking the whole group to the VIP room, a place that would help them become billionaires, Nami immediately agreed, when Bakura took the whole group into the elevator, then a big-headed guy appeared, his name is Tanaka, the head of casino security, turns out he ate the devil fruit of penetration, so he can lead the whole group through walls, at this point, the entire group was taken to a luxurious room, a place reserved for VIP guests, unexpectedly, there were even marines here, Bakura told them not to worry, because this city is recognized by the world government as a neutral zone, suddenly, a tall guy named Dice appeared, he is the champion of the gaming floor, so, he immediately displayed his skill of shaking giant dice, made the entire group surprised, because this guy seems a bit crazy, suddenly, Bakura proposed lending the entire group 300 million berry, immediately shocked Nami, thinking she's rich this time, unexpectedly, Luffy placed all his bets on even numbers, dice immediately rolled the dice out, fortunately, it turned out to be an even number, so, the whole group continued to win big, suddenly, Tessero appeared and greeted Luffy's group, when they found out he's nicknamed the king of casinos, Luffy immediately said, I will be the pirate king, making Tessero feel exited, so, he proposed a bet with Luffy for a round, if Luffy wins, the reward will increase tenfold, seeing the opportunity to get rich right in front of them, so Luffy immediately agreed, he then placed all his money on an odd number, suddenly, Bakura touched Luffy's back, Dice then rolled the dice, which turned out to be an even number, so Luffy lost, Robin realized Bakura had a devil fruit ability, it turns out her ability is to change luck, when Luffy felt nothing strange, suddenly, he had a stomach ache, also slipped on a banana peel, 
It was only at this point that everyone realized Tessero had deceived them. So, he demanded that Luffy's group pay back 320 million berry. Zoro and Sanji realized it was time to fight. Suddenly, Bakura pretended to fall. Made Sanji passionate about the girl. So she managed to touch him. Immediately caused Sanji to have bad luck. Tanaka also began to secretly use his devil fruit to attack them. Frankie attacked Dice. Unexpectedly, he enjoyed being hit. While Zoro challenged Tessero. So, he immediately went up to him, unexpectedly, he could turn Zoro's leg into gold, and easily blocked Zoro's attack. It was only then that he told everyone, I have eaten the gold devil fruit, can control all types of gold. It turns out that from the beginning, when Luffy's group arrived here, he secretly infused gold dust into their bodies. Therefore, he could turn the entire group into gold at any time. At this point, he demanded the entire group to repay their debt to him by tomorrow night. If not, he would immediately execute Zoro. So Nami agreed, at this moment, they were figuring out how to repay the debt to Tessero. But Luffy felt his stomach growling, so they had to eat first. Suddenly, a girl bumped into Nami. She immediately noticed that this girl was stealing her money. Nami recognized her as Karina, Nami's close friend from before. It turns out she was also working for Tessero, and they were also adversaries. Finally, Luffy got to eat. Karina revealed she was working here to investigate Tessero and find a way to steal his gold, because he owns more than 20% of the world's gold. At this point, Karina took out Tessero's safe key, and inside, there were over 500 billion berry. This immediately shocked the entire group, because that amount of money could buy an entire country. So Karina proposed that Luffy's group collaborate with her to steal that money, Nami and Luffy immediately agreed. But when Nami asked for a 70 to 30 split, they argued, suddenly, they saw two kids being bullied, Karina explained that these kids were sold by their families to pay debts, so they had to be lifelong slaves for Tessero. Suddenly, a man stepped in to stop the bullies, he even begged them to spare the children. Seeing him remaining still, allowing them to trample, made Luffy angrily ask, why didn't you fight back? But for them, without money, there would never be freedom. At this time, CP0's Spandam arrived to find Tessero. It turns out he used money to bribe the world government and they were planning to call the navy to capture Luffy. On the other side, the revolutionary army was also investigating Tessero. Knowing Luffy was also here, it surprised Sabo. Meanwhile, Luchi was requesting a Kainu to deploy 10 warships to capture Luffy. The next morning, Luffy's group began preparing for the plan, and they went shopping for a lot of disguises. By evening, Nami sought to talk with Karina, blaming her for abandoning her when stealing from Mad's treasure previously. It turns out both of them were continuously tortured by him at that time. So Karina suggested her to ransom both of them, but Karina didn't come back. Nami realized she was deceived, so she decided to hand over her treasure to them. Unexpectedly, Nami's treasure was also stolen by Karina, causing Nami to feel desperate. At this point, Karina remained indifferent, because at that time, she had no other choice to keep her treasure. But Nami decided to trust Karina once again, by nightfall. Everyone was ready to steal Tessero's money, their plan was to break into the top floor of the building, because the sum of 500 billion berries was located there, however, the building was heavily guarded, along with numerous surveillance snails, so Luffy's group needed to break into the control room first, to deactivate all the surveillance devices, afterward, the entire group will proceed to infiltrate using the staircase to reach the safe, at this point, Luffy began to act, he and Frankie climbed from the outside, meanwhile, Nami's team pretended to be janitorial staff. Karina immediately drew the attention of the guard group, allowing Nami's team to sneak inside with the dice device into the VIP area. Thanks to this, the entire group successfully infiltrated. On Luffy's side, they were still ascending upwards. Unexpectedly, both of them slipped and fell. Fortunately, Frankie pulled Luffy up. Thus, they successfully infiltrated the building. Meanwhile, Nami's group was running towards the staircase. Suddenly, they discovered numerous alarm owls here. Karina realized Chopper could hear animal sounds. Thus, he led the entire group past the flock of owls. Unexpectedly, Brooke was spotted. But the owl flock did not raise an alarm, because they thought Brooke was dead. At this point, the whole group reached the staircase entrance. On Frankie and Luffy's side, they found a gigantic transponder snail. Thus, Luffy stealthily infiltrated below, to cut off the surveillance connectio thought they had succeeded, unexpectedly, he was discovered, so, they immediately rushed in to attack Luffy, Frankie immediately jumped down to support him,
Taking advantage of this opportunity, they fled. Unexpectedly, Frankie was attacked by Tessero. He was surprised to see Luffy infiltrating here, and to show Luffy that Zoro was about to be turned into gold. Making Luffy furious, he immediately used Gear 2 to attack him, but he managed to block and restrain Luffy's hands, making it impossible for him to escape. So he threw him away, for Tanaka to capture them both. On Nami's side, they realized Luffy had been captured, so they had to find a way to escape from there. The soldiers quickly found Nami's group. Sanji immediately defeated all the guard soldiers. Suddenly, they all ran into a room meant for celestial dragons. Seeing the celestial dragons there, Nami immediately came up with a plan. On Luffy's side, he was imprisoned in a room entirely made of gold, surprising both of them. Suddenly, another group of people appeared. It turned out they needed food and drinks. Despite them holding a lot of gold in their hands, this man immediately told Luffy, this place is called the Gold Prison, built by Tessero himself to torment others. Suddenly, Frankie realized this old man was Ray's Max, a legendary gambler who has never lost a game, and he joined the Revolutionary Army. But when Luffy wanted to immediately defeat Tessero, he was immediately stopped by everyone, because any movement would immediately alert Tessero. At this point, everyone told Luffy, Tessero can't control the gold submerged in seawater, but the seawater is only present below this ship. The only way to get seawater is through this pipeline, although they said no one had survived inside it, but Luffy didn't hesitate to jump in immediately, Frankie said this is a big gamble for everyone, on Tessero's side, he informed Zoro, that he would execute him, because Luffy's group wouldn't be able to earn enough money, but Zoro still trusted everyone, he was certain they would come to rescue him, while Nami's group disguised themselves as celestial dragon men, as a result, they easily fooled the guard troops, on Luffy's side, he was with the prisoners searching for seawater. Suddenly, they saw a giant propeller. Ray's Max said this propeller was made of sea stone. There was no way to get past it. Unexpectedly, without much thought, Luffy immediately jumped down. He was struck away by the propeller, but he still didn't give up, determined to overcome it to defeat Tessero. Thus, Frankie immediately pulled Luffy up. Seeing Luffy's determination, Ray's Max decided to bet on Luffy once. So, he immediately jumped down to the propeller. Even though he was hit by the propeller, yet, he was still determined to stop it, seeing Ray's Max not having enough strength. So, everyone also jumped down to help him, because none of them wanted to owe Tessero anymore, and they wanted to regain their freedom. Finally, the propeller stopped. Therefore, Luffy's group succeeded in advancing into the water pumping room. Meanwhile, Nami's group also found Tessero's safe. Karina immediately took the key to open the safe. They thought they had succeeded but it was actually a trap set by Tessero, leading them to Zoro's execution show. It turns out Karina had tricked them from the beginning. This left Nami shocked, unable to believe she had been fooled by her again. At this point, Tessero was very pleased, because the Straw Hat group had been turned into his amusement. Unexpectedly, he also knew that Luffy's group had gone to the water pump. At this moment, Luffy destroyed the water pump, causing the seawater to flood out consequently washing away Tessero's gold. However, they didn't know that Tessero was monitoring them, so, he closed all the doors, intending to drown them in the seawater, making Nami's group worried, while Tessero was enjoying himself, because his money could do anything, immediately making Sanji angry and attacking Tessero. So he controlled gold to capture him and the others. At this point, he created two golden hammers to execute Zoro. When he thought he was the victor, unexpectedly, the entire city lost power causing Tessero to be confused about what was happening. Nami laughed and said, we've tricked you now. Suddenly, the seawater began to spurt up, creating a rain that washed away Tessero's gold everywhere in the city. Thanks to that, Zoro and everyone else were freed. Frankie and everyone else also managed to escape. At this point, Tessero still doesn't understand what's happening. Turns out Karina didn't betray Luffy's group at all. And from the start, Tessero was part of their plan. Only Luffy didn't know about this plan so the whole group was ready to fight, causing Tessero to become very angry, he couldn't believe he was deceived, it turns out Tessero always wanted to become a star from a young age, but because his family was very poor, he was forced into a life of crime, until one day, he met a slave girl named Stella, since then, Tessero was determined to make a lot of money, to buy Stella's freedom, unexpectedly, she had been bought by a celestial dragon, this even turned Tessero into a slave, knowing that Stella had died, Tessero very agonized, so he was determined to seek revenge on everyone who dared to mock him. Thus, Tessero activated all the gold in the building, turning everyone in the stands into gold. 
Frankie immediately led the entire group away. At that moment, Tessero transformed into a giant golden mechanical figure. He said to Luffy, I will crush everything in this world. This made Luffy furious, he immediately jumped up and used Gear 3 against Tessero. However, Luffy was repelled by him. Dice quickly transformed and attacked Zoro. However, Zoro managed to block the attack. It turns out Tessero had created golden armor for them, helped to enhance strength, so the entire group was surrounded by them. Meanwhile, Luffy was captured by Spandam using sea stone spiked chains. It turns out he wanted revenge on Luffy for the CP9 incident. Fortunately, a kid arrived in time to help Luffy. Ray's Max and others also arrived to stop the soldiers. Thanks to that, Luffy escaped from the chains. He knocked out Spandam. Zoro, on the other hand, was battling Dice. Surprisingly, his attacks couldn't penetrate his armor. While Sanji and Robin were facing Tanaka, he kept shifting, making it hard for them to keep up. Tanaka immediately captured Robin to threaten Sanji. Meanwhile, Bakura had taken away everyone's luck, so Usopp couldn't hit her. At this moment, she used only one coin, causing everyone to be hit by a near-fatal bomb. Realizing there was no way to fight her, Usopp immediately ran away. While Luffy returned to fight Tessero, he was punched straight to the ground, however, Luffy immediately retaliated against him. Suddenly, the navy also appeared to attack them. It turns out Luchi's goal was also to defeat Tessero. Surprisingly, a wall of fire appeared. Stopping the navy, it turns out Sabo has arrived. I won't allow you to interfere with my little brother's battle. He immediately transformed and fought Sabo. Meanwhile, Luffy kept attacking Tessero. However, none of his attacks could penetrate Tessero's layer of gold. As a result, Tessero struck Luffy hard, sending him flying with a powerful blow. This made Karina think Luffy was defeated. When he intended to attack Karina, Nami timely saved her. Karina couldn't understand why Nami saved her. It turns out that previously, Karina didn't abandon Nami and she returned to trick a guy named Mad so that Nami could escape. So this time, Nami decided to help Karina, telling her to trust Luffy. Suddenly, Nami was caught by Tessero. He said, your friends won't be able to do anything. As he intended to deal with Nami, Luffy got up. He demanded he release Nami, seeing Luffy made him remember his past, so he immediately threw Nami away. Fortunately, Luffy managed to catch Nami and Karina just in time. When Tessero attacked, Luffy threw them to Robin, then he activated Gear 4, to block Tessero's attack, causing one of Tessero's golden arms to shatter. Luffy then unleashed an incredibly powerful punch, he caused him to fall to the ground. On Robin's side, she managed to catch Tanaka. It turned out she discovered he could only phase through objects, so Sanji immediately moved to defeat him. On Bakura's side, when she intended to deal with Chopper's group, Usopp used a pouch to snatch her coins, unexpectedly causing her luck to disappear. It turned out that inside the pouch was a lucky draw machine that absorbed all of her luck. As for Zoro, he decided to seriously fight against Ice. Unexpectedly with just one sword strike, he shattered his armor. Everyone thought Tessero had been defeated. Suddenly, he released all the gold in the city, immediately capturing everyone and intending to absorb them. He said, gold will help me dominate the world. Well then, why don't you try to dominate my fist? Luffy immediately enlarged his arm, so Tessero immediately attacked him. He thought he had defeated Luffy. Unexpectedly, Luffy continued to advance and defeated Tessero with a powerful blow. Finally, Tessero was defeated by Luffy and fell onto the navy ship. So Luchi had no reason to fight Sabo anymore. Even though Luffy had won, Karina said, Tessero's ship is about to explode. This caused everyone to fear and run away. Suddenly, Karina decided to sacrifice herself, to control the ship away from everyone. She entrusted Nami to Frankie to take her away. While everyone was worried, thinking the ship would explode, it turned out to be just fireworks. Karina actually deceived everyone to take all of Tessero's gold for herself. Suddenly, the navy started attacking Luffy's group, so they realized it was time to leave. Today's video ends here. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to support Oni Chan in the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching, much love.